done, I thought I would put together some videos um, where I talk over some PowerPoints so that you can watch it at your own time and um, make your way through all of the different modules. I can definitely appreciate that learning ultrasound online is really, really hard. And if you don't have a clinical training position, trying to wrap your head around um, image orientation and interpretation can be really, really difficult. So today what we're going to be talking about is some basic novology, the scanning planes and ultrasound, ultrasound image orientation, and we're going to practice describing ultrasound images. So when we talk about novology, it's literally the knobs on an ultrasound machine. If you ever watch a sonographer scan, you'll see that they're constantly changing things. They're manipulating their depth, they're moving their focus, they're adjusting their TGCs or their time gain compensation. By the time you finish your readings and by the time you finish this lecture, hopefully you have a better understanding of what those things mean and why they're so important. Our primary imaging controls would be um, the transducer probe button. So that's what allows a sonographer to select which transducer they want to use. The gain is usually a knob where you can turn to the right or to the left, and it's what adjusts the overall gain of the entire image. So if you are watching a sonographer and, or someone with an ultrasound machine and they turn up the gain, what you're doing is you're actually amplifying all of the echoes on the entire image. And so they look really, really, really bright. The other thing that we can do is we can turn down our gain and we can turn it down so almost everything looks really, really dark or black or anechoic or even hypoechoic on our screen. Obviously, there is um, a balance as to what kind of gain we want to see because you do want to be able to tell the difference between the different echo textures in our organs. The frequency button is what allows us to change or toggle between different frequencies. This is a result of um, our actual transducers being broad bandwidth transducers, which means they don't operate just at one frequency. They're usually a range. The depth is what allows us to change how deep into the body we want our ultrasound machine to be listening to the echoes. So if I'm scanning someone's thyroid, um, the thyroid is in the neck and it's really, really superficial. So I probably don't need to set my depth at I don't know, let's say 16 centimeters, because it's not that deep. I'm not gonna be listening to anything else. Versus if I'm looking at someone's liver, um, the liver can go quite deep, and I am gonna have my, my depth set at about 16 or 17 centimeters, depending again on the patient body habitus and on the um, echogenicity or density of the liver. Um, our time gain compensation is what equalizes the differences in received echo amplitudes due to the depth of imaging. So we have to remember that as we send a pulse of sound in, it's going to go through the body and the deeper that it goes, the more that sound is going to get absorbed. The more it gets absorbed, the weaker the amplitude of that returning echo is going to be. So again, if you think about the liver, I'm gonna have part of my liver that is really close to the front of my, my abdomen or the anterior part of my stomach. And there is also a really, really deep portion of my liver. So the echoes that come back that are in that superficial portion of my liver might come back really, really strong. And the ones that are really, really deep in my body might come back a lot weaker or they'll look darker on, on ultrasound. What's really important as a sonographer is that you're able to recognize that it's because of that attenuation of the sound and not because of pathology. And so time gain compensation allows the actual sonographer to manipulate those echoes and inherently increase or strengthen the echo and they're making up for the time um, or, you know, yeah, I guess really it is the time that that echo would have spent traveling, therefore also losing its strength. I hope that kind of makes sense. 
um, our focal position. It is what allows us to move the focal zone or the focus while we're imaging. It's important because the sonographer is always going to place their focus um, either at the level or just posterior to the level of interest. If they're scanning an entire organ, then the level of interest is going to be that organ. Um, and if there is pathology present, then the organ or the area of interest story is going to be that pathology. The reason why we always keep the focal position either at or just posterior to the level of interest is because when you think about what the beam looks like, the beam, when it goes into the focal zone, is going in it's converging. And if you think about um, the intensity uh, formula, which is intensity equals power over area, if I decrease my area, my intensity is going to increase. So I, of course, want to have the most intense portion of my beam or the area that I'm scanning to be within the most intense portion of the beam. As well as it is converging, you can see, just based on my hands, that the beam is gonna become more and more narrow. The more narrow my beam, the better my lateral resolution, which means better imaging quality for myself and for the patient. Um, our freeze key is going to be what allows us to stop live scanning and potentially um, allow us to kind of acquire an image. Our cine is something where it pretty much, while we're scanning, our ultrasound machine stores recently scanned image frames in its memory before we press our freeze button. So what I can do is I can freeze and I can usually go back and cine through or look through the frames of images that I had beforehand. Print is what allows me to store that image um, in my memory and then send it to PAX eventually. And Doppler, um, there's usually different Doppler buttons depending on what kind of Doppler we want to activate. So Doppler is one of the features that ultrasound uses to assess blood flow. Um, Doppler is based on the Doppler principle. So it's not looking, I mean, when you look at an ultrasound image and Doppler is on, it's usually going to be red or blue, but that does not tell us whether it's arterial or venous flow. It actually tells us whether it's moving towards or away from the transducer. We're not actually going to go into too much information about Doppler. Um, that's something that you would learn in ultrasound tech. Um, that's pretty much all you need to know for right now. When we are scanning, some of the general rules that we want to follow um, is that you always want to use the highest frequency possible when you're scanning without sacrificing imaging depth. So you would now be hopefully quite familiar with the fact that if we increase our frequency, we decrease our penetration depth. If I'm trying to scan someone's liver, it would be really, really foolish of me to use a 17 megahertz transducer because there's no way I'm going to be able to penetrate to the posterior part of the liver. Maybe if I'm looking at the liver surface, I might want to use a more a higher frequency transducer like a 12 linear transducer. But if I'm trying to look at that posterior aspect of the liver, I'm probably going to want um, a curved linear transducer around three to five megahertz. If it's a child or a really thin patient, I might opt for a little bit higher, going as high as nine megahertz, but not too much higher than that. Whenever we're scanning, you always, always, always need to optimize your image, even if it's just for an interrogation of an organ. So what I always say is that you want to adjust your depth, focus, and your TGC, and then you can start your interrogation. If I'm scanning an organ or going through an organ, and I haven't optimized my image and my my area of interest isn't within the most intense portion of my beam, and I'm telling my ultrasound machine to listen much further in the body so my, my depth is set wrong, I'm not actually going to see any pathology if there is any because my image isn't optimized. There's so many limiting factors of ultrasound and the way that sound interacts with our body that you want to do everything you possibly can to increase the likeliness that you're going to pick up on those small, subtle abnormalities. At the end of the day, ultrasound is really pattern recognition. And so you want to, again, increase the likeliness that you're going to pick up on those subtle changes. And the way that you do that is by optimizing your image. It's decreasing your depth, 
it's adjusting where your focus is, and it's making sure that your TGCs are set correctly. A correct TGC scale is usually quite gradual and it's sliding. It's not sporadic um, in any way. And again, I can appreciate that if you're not scanning, this can be a bit hard to understand, um, but if you have access to an ultrasound department or if you are scanning, if you are scanning, go play around with the TGC. If you have access to an ultrasound department, ask one of the sonographers to show you what the, what the TGC does and how that affects an image. So here is actually a really good example of what a poor TGC curve looks like compared to one that's really, really great or properly set. So in this first image on the left, you can see that in the posterior part of my image, which is the back here, it becomes extremely bright. So it looks like this area here, and what I'm looking at is the thyroid. My thyroid um, echogenicity or echo texture looks really inhomogeneous. Um, it also looks like this area right here, which is kind of this mass or nodule, it looks like within the cystic component, there might actually be some debris. Um, and all of that is really important that we actually get an accurate picture of what is going on. Whether or not um, a mass is solid or cystic, it actually plays a huge role in how we stage it on ultrasound. Ultrasound is really good at describing, we cannot 100% say that something is benign versus malignant, but masses do have benign features and they do have malignant features. And if our image isn't optimally set, then it's going to look like something that isn't going on is going on. If you look at this image here on the right hand side, you can see that my TGC curve, which is just shown right here along the side, is actually smooth in comparison to this one here, which is all staggered and all over the place. With my smooth TGC, I can appreciate that this portion, the cystic portion of this entire mass, actually is um, hypoechoic or anechoic, and there is a small septation within it. I can also appreciate that the rest of my thyroid um, gland seems pretty homogeneous as well. The echo texture is the same all the way through. And then posterior to this mass here, I can appreciate that there's some acoustic enhancement, which means that this is likely um, not a solid mass images. We're actually going to be assessing where the focus is. So on the image to the left, it is set just posterior to the level of the thyroid, which would be fine if I'm assessing the thyroid. You can really, really appreciate that acoustic enhancement posterior to this mass. But even the borders on this mass aren't as well defined as when we look at this image here, where I changed the focus to being at the level of the mass. Look at how crisp and well defined these borders are. You can see them really, really clearly. And again, it's because I've now placed that mass within the most intense portion of the beam. So I'm getting the strongest echoes returning back to the camera or to the transducer, which then allows it to, to look really, really great and to have really um, well-defined borders on the image. If we don't optimize our images, then when we take poorly optimized images, it's going to look like pathology exists. This image here is an image of the liver and the gallbladder. And in this gallbladder, it looks like there is a lot of debris or echoes. When we look at a normal gallbladder, we expect it to be completely echo-free or anechoic. We expect the wall to be well-defined and thin and echogenic. And you can't really make that out in this image. When you're doing an ultrasound, you pretty much are telling a story of everything that is and is not going on in the body. If you don't take the time to optimize your image and make it look like or, or demonstrate what really is going on, um, you're going to have to remember that someone else is going to look at your images and they're going to question you. They're not going to know if there is sludge in the gallbladder or if it's just because you haven't optimized your image.